All right, welcome to the last class. Um, my group yesterday had a similar last class. It lasted exactly 22 minutes, 34 seconds. Um, I'm guessing this will be about the same, except you guys have a slight variation. Um, what I'm gonna do is go over what to expect on the exam, the rules of engagement. Um, and, you know, I'll clarify some of these topics as follows sections. Um, so, final exam is 40 questions, about 80 minutes. Um, that's an insane amount of time for 40 questions. Okay? Uh, yeah. Um, the standard for questions, in case you guys ever wonder about a paper-based exam for multiple choice test, uh, the university standard in Canada is uh, 36 seconds a question. Uh, the college standard for Ontario is uh, 55 seconds a question. You guys are getting two minutes a question. Um, because there's a few reasons I tend to choose to do that. And we're doing the same thing with the other course where they're getting not two minutes a question, but they're getting like a minute and a half question or something. Uh, because I know in my other group of 109 students, because my other group's like twice the size of you guys almost, there is eight native English speakers out of the 100, 109 students. Um, so we tend to be a little more forgiving on the time because we fully realize that if English isn't your first language, questions might be hard to read. I uh, yes, you had to take your IETL or whatever it was to come here. And, um, yeah, that, that doesn't mean you can read. It just means you pass the IETL. <laughs> um, it's like anything else, right? Where if you can study and cram for it and pass it, and then you don't never need to think about it ever again. Okay, so uh, the exam is Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday, according to Access Anyways, April at 5 p.m. Hang on, is it four or five? Is it four? Let me double check before I uh, confuse everybody and I'm just giving everybody the wrong info. It's gonna be at four o'clock, six, uh, yeah. But I am just going to double check because Murphy's Law would state. Yes, good. I didn't get it wrong. Um, at 4 p.m. next Tuesday. Uh, it's in T117. You guys probably know where that is. Uh, if you don't, it's on the ground floor of T building. It's right next to T119. <laughs> um, you know where Bits and Bytes is? Just go downstairs from Bits and Bytes, that's T119 and T117. That, no, that's not bad. Uh, I mean, I, I'm teaching in, yeah. Well, I mean, I taught in 119, 119 was fine. I don't know what 17 is like, but it'll do for a test. Yeah, you know, that whole building's pretty dumpsterish right now. Um, as you know, it's on paper with Scantron. Um, you can thank, uh, whole bunch of students that got caught cheating. Yeah, not quite. Um, and of course, the knee-jerk reaction for the department was to... I'll be putting it on the announcements for you, eh? You don't need to take pictures. It'll be going there. Oh, to take notes? Sure, knock yourself out. Um, the knee-jerk reaction, of course, was to ban electronic exams until they've put in some policies. Not enforcement, because there's no real way to enforce it. Um, like one person says, well, we could go to a test center and get everybody right at the test center. There's 4,000 students in ICT alone. There's no way they could flow that many courses through the test center. They need to do an online test. Uh, or banning chat GPT from uh, AC Secure, uh, which just means you turn on your hotspot. Or um, you can only access the test via the IP address here on the network. Cool. Load, load up a VM, put the VM on the internal network and put your rest of your machine, second IP address on not the network and away you go. Trust me, I know every single way to get around a test. Uh, how do I know? Because I've watched students do it over the years. Um, and that whole, uh, hey, there's a little way to inject JavaScript to detect if you leave the screen with your mouse. 
Yeah, just launch your browser in a virtual machine. It'll never know you left it. So, yeah. Um, so it's Scantron. Um, use an HP pencil. It's got a, your marking has, should be as dark as my soul. And bring a really good eraser. I, I recommend those nice white vinyl, you know, dot the orange rips your paper to pieces erasers. Because um, if you've never experienced Scantron, there's a few things you need to know about how Scantron works. I'm even using the real colors for you. It's blue. All right, so when you fill it in, you should fill it in so it's like this, all the way in, right? It's okay if you go over the line a little bit. This will not work, this won't work, this won't work, and that won't work. Why? Because it needs to see that. Number two, the reason I say bring a really good eraser is you go, oh shit, I got it wrong. And you kind of erase it like that. And then you go and you fill in, I don't know, the other answer over here. Scantron, when it's reading the sheet, it reads that way. It reads left to right across every row. Therefore, if it sees this and it just gets triggered, because sometimes it'll pick it up, sometimes it won't, and it picks this one up, it stops scanning the rest of that line and it skips to the next batch. So, yeah. Well, pardon? It's not smart? Well, I mean, Scantron's been around since the 60s. Um, yeah, our Scantron machines are slightly more modern. Uh, they had to get special drivers to make them work with Windows 10 because they were actually meant for Windows XP. So it gives you an idea how old these machines are. They work great. I mean, I can scan an entire class's worth of Scantron tests in like 40 seconds. Um, the reason I say be careful with this is that we have, we're dropping them off at the test center because the self-serve scan area is closed after hours. And they don't double check. Like if they look at the results and they see that there's this, because it'll tell you if there's ambiguous results, they're not going to go through all the Scantron sheets to find that one person. They're just going to mark it as wrong. So just be careful with your Scantron sheets. If you mess up your Scantron sheet, that's cool. Put up your hand. I'll give you a new one. It's all good. You can go have as many as you want within reason. I'm coming in with a pack of 100. There's 69 students. Yes. A dimple? Yeah, yeah. So you, when you color it in, that's why you use a good quality HP pencil, not the shitty ones from Dollarama. Because the ones from Dollarama are actually they're not real HP pencils. Most of them are 2H, which is slightly harder. It's like the artwork style pencils. Um, a good HP pencil will fill it in really well without having to, like, you know, try to tattoo the desk. Um, but yeah. Um, like I, like I said, if you noticed that you botched it, just put your hand up and you'll get to redo it. Um, so, yeah, so it's 40 questions, multiple guess, true, false. There's only one answer per question because Scantron or Scantron system is kind of stupid and it doesn't really handle multiple answer. Yeah, apparently. I wonder how fast ChatGPT could grade my tests. Um, so, uh, there's that. So a few th other things, um, when you come in, I'm going to ask you guys to put your bags under your desk. I don't like people leaving their bags at the front of the room because at that point I'm not responsible for your personal belongings. And if it just so happens that somebody goes to grab their bag and they ruffle through your bag and grab your shit on the way by, or they, you got two people in here with the exact same bag and somebody grabs the wrong bag on the way out because they're crying. That's, you know, um, I'd rather not. So bags go under your desk. Phones are muted in your bag. Um, you should have uh, your photo ID on the corner, even though I know most of your faces. I may or may not have a proctor that may not know you. Uh, I've asked for a proctor and nobody's actually volunteered. So I may not have a proctor, but that's fine. Um, Smart watches. Take a guess what I'm going to say about that. 
that's going in your bag too. Uh, a couple of years ago, before COVID, we had one person with their happy little whatever smartwatch they had going. And every once in a while, I'd see them do this with their wrist. I'm like, what the heck are they doing? Are they having a spasm or something? Look at them. And he's flicking it. And it was literally turning on and off with a, like a cheat sheet on his little screen. I'm like, come on. So smartwatches are out. If you have a mechanical watch, that's cool. I'll have a timer up on the screen anyways. Uh, so you'll know how much time you don't have. Um, other things that I've um, caught in the past. Uh, if I don't speak your language and you're talking to someone else, I'm assuming you're cheating. I've had people where because of the, because they just because I don't understand what they're saying, think. It's like you hear somebody speaking in a language and somebody else goes, pip, 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 pip. I'm like, come on, guys. I don't know what you're saying. So I'm just going to assume you're both cheating and, and report both of you. Right? So don't talk. That's pretty a safe assumption. I'm going to actually, the room's big enough. I should be able to spread you guys out pretty well. So there should be almost an empty desk between each of you. So that, you know, you'll have to talk louder if you want to cheat. Um, other techniques I have seen over the years so that you guys are aware. Um, I also do no Morse code. As I had one per at one group once, I, I kept hearing. I'm like, I kept hearing the tapping, right? I'm going, then suddenly I hear like, I'm like, what the hell's that? So after a bit, I realized they were tapping out, you know, question number. Bad number of tap, not that's not that, but they were literally using like, you know, they go, that's question 12, right? And then the other person would like tap out the answer that they had. I'm like, they were doing this in the gym. Like the whole room could hear it. And it took us a while to figure it out because, you know, it was subtle enough that, you know, somebody's writing and they're just going like this with their hand, right? So literally I spent 20 minutes doing laps around part of the one part of the gym. They kept on going while I was going right past them. And in the end, it was one of the other profs that caught the answerer, right? And suddenly that when the prof put his hand on the person's shoulder, one person next to me dropped their pencil because they panicked because they got caught. So, yeah, I, what I'll be watching for is, you know, subtle communication or not so subtle communication, depending how it is. Uh, these are the fun things I have seen during a test. So I've seen a lot of ways people have tried to cheat over the years. Uh, you are allowed to bring in a drink if you want. Uh, I'm going to require it to be in a clear container. I have to be able to see the liquid. Why? Because I once had somebody with a nice water bottle that was drunk, transparent, and they were like drinking, and then they took the top off because I guess it wasn't going fast enough. They were drinking, and I'm going, I walked by, and you could see like papers jammed in, his te in the bottle. I'm like, come on. Um, like, you know, it's like one of those things where like that far away making everybody just sit there naked. Not quite, but no, no, but just saying, you know, it's, I've seen a lot of weird ways of cheating. So yeah, some, somebody will come up with a new one I haven't seen yet, or they'll be subtle enough. I haven't caught them, but please don't cheat. You just make, it's like three hours of paperwork for me, for every person I catch. It's just not a fan of having to deal with that process. And that's per person, per, per student. So, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, all right. So that is the rules of engagement for the test. Um, I'll show you guys the front cover so you know what you're going to see when you first get there. Um, there is actually a proper header on it. When I cleared up my setting of the page, I just stripped it off. But you will notice on the front page that there's a spot for your student number, your name, and a signature. That is your attendance. Originally, it was supposed to be these handy little cue cards. And my printer hated these. I couldn't find my old ones that were hot pink and hot yellow and, you know, neon green. I don't know where they went. I actually had stacks of colored, good quality. So I quickly picked these up and my printer would jam on every single one. So I'm like, okay. Instead, I grabbed some special ink and I marked the corners. Um, honestly, I don't care if you use these cards as long as it is four by six, double-sided. Um, you even get to keep the because I'll be using that as your attendance. Um, now, the reason why it is, when I ask for your student name, please write it like it's in 
Brightspace or Axis, either one, um, because historically I've seen it people's signatures that look. I've had one person sign their test because they used to require a signature on the test, and they just go like this. I'm like, that tells me nothing. I don't know who that is. Uh, or I'd had people writing it in Chinese. I've seen it written in Korean, writing their names in their native language. I can't read Chinese. Can't read Japanese. I can't read. Actually, I can read Spanish, so I can't use that. And Portuguese is close enough that I can figure it out. Um, I do not read Cyrillic, so you know, please write it the way it is in Axis. It'll make my life so much easier. Um, and put in your sign your signatures, as you can see. Um, wow, that screen's terrible. It's the usual. Actually, you can ignore the no aids because I'm allowing the the card. Uh, no other aids, it should say, but it's too late. My tests are already printed. Um, obviously, no chat application. Cell phones must be put away. Uh, the other thing that I ask is you write, when you fill in your tests, circle the answers on the test also in case there's Scantron issues. Because what happens is I'll get the grades from the test center and then I won't actually get the tests, like the Scantron sheets, for a week after. My grades are due before that I get the paper back. So if I notice that, you know, normally you're sitting in my class with a pretty good grade and you bomb the test, at least I can go and check at your paper copy and make sure maybe you just had a bad moment with Scantron. Um, so it'll allow me to, you know, quickly uh, double check your situation. Uh, so that is what I'm asking for this. All right, now the breakdown of the questions. Uh, these are pretty accurate, um, the numbers, although some may overlap a little bit over the topics because some of the topics are, you know, related. So there's six questions about backup and restore. Uh, that will include things like, what is the command that you use? Yes, Mac users, things don't have .exe on it for you guys. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can figure out the difference. Um, so it might ask you, what's the program you use? Uh, what's a, a better strategy? Where should you store your backups? Those kinds of questions. Um, they're fairly straightforward. Um, there's 10 questions about users and security, including stuff like, um, you know, what's the principle of least privilege, which we talked about several times. Um, you know, what's the command you use to give permissions? What's the command you use to take away permissions? That kind of stuff. Um, literally, there's nothing that's not on the slides. Um, transactions, 11 questions. Um, there'll be questions about what the different letters of ACID. So you should know what the four letters of ACID stand for. ACID, yeah. And, uh, you know, you should know how you start a transaction, how you, you know, commit or roll back. Um, there's a few where it shows the start of a transaction and it says, well, you know, if you were in another terminal, how many records would you see? A bit like the lab. Um, that kind of question. Uh, functions and procedures, seven questions about that. Uh, some of them include, um, you know, parameters, inbound, outbound parameters. We talked about, you know, in, out, and both parameters. Um, you know, the, use, the usage of the, del the delimiter command to change the meaning of, you know, what the delimiter is. Um, a bit of structure on that. Uh, and then triggers. Um, there's six questions on triggers that will give you, um, there's a few things for triggers where there's, um, a couple of code examples and it'll say on this trigger, is this going to do what you think it's going to do? You know, is this going to, and I can't really say anything without actually giving you the question and most the answer, but you know, reading this, this very short trigger, will it do this? And then you go options A, B, C, or D. Well, actually no, in those cases they're true, false. It's more or less, well, let's do what you think it's going to do. Yes, no. So um, there's probably out of the 40 questions, I think there's about five or six where you have to actually understand the, S the underlying SQL, as in the function is there or the um, actual command is there, and it's going to ask you questions whether or not it's going to do what you think it's going to do. Or do you understand what it's going to do is more correct. 
Um, but yeah, it only covers from the second half of the term, which is good. You have less to worry about memory, uh, memorizing. Um, and that's about it. Um, I'll open the floor for questions. Hey. Okay. Oh, yes. Well, you are allowed one card to come in. You're allowed to have several to in case you screw it up. But like I said, as long as it's a four by six card, it's cool. Yes. For this? Well, this is a, like, if you open up Word, this is standard four by six. Like Word has a template for, for cue cards. Is there a printer here at the school? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you can. It's okay if you want to print it on a computer. I'm, I'm cool. Hopefully, your printer doesn't hate these cards as much as mine did. And it's not like mine's a cheap printer. Mine's like a $900 color laser, and it just every card just halfway in jammed. And small cards are hard to get out of a printer. A what size? An official size? Uh, well, this is a North American size, so it's four by six inches. Um, do is there something in Word for that standard size? I can almost guarantee it. Uh, no, that's not it. Design. No. Layout. No. References. No. I know it's in here somewhere. File new four by six. Yeah, there's a way of doing it in Word. I just can't remember off the top of my head because um, I've already got like a mail merge set up for students at home. So. <laughs> and I feel stupid because I used to train Word, but back like in like Word 2.0, not this uh but there is a, an actual uh size for this somewhere i just don't remember where it is actually if i go home so we'll click on the there's under mailings but there's actually a way to just change your default size and um yeah hang on my copy word just hung it doesn't like my computer this laptop does not like when i'm recording for some unknown reason, considering what's under the hood, it should not have these issues. And Word is dead. Congratulations. Yes, there is a way. If you look it up really quick on the internet, ask ChatGPT. It'll tell you. That'll probably be the fastest answer. Well, it's more on the slides and the, the documents I gave you guys, like, you know, how there's each of the sections had like a document that covered some of that material. You should understand the labs because the questions that require you to understand the code probably assume that you've done the labs. But that's as far as it really needs to go. Just if you want to review your labs, cool. Yep. And there we go. It's under, if you click on the rulers, you can set your size. And you can set your card and print to your heart's content. Um, apparently, it just took a while for my uh, copy of Word to come back from the dead. Okay, uh, any more questions? If you didn't grab a cue card and you don't want to go out and buy yourself cue cards, feel free to come and grab one. You will notice that I put a little mark on the corner. Um, because I'd marked those corners for when I was going to print them, and then I didn't print them because my printer didn't like them. So it is what it is. Any other questions? Yeah. No. You know, I could just have said no cue cards. Yeah, but there's optimizing, and then there's stupid. You're the third person, you're the second person to ask about magnifying glass. No. 
And I don't, and no, you're not going to show up with the, like the magnify the glasses that dentists have when they're working your teeth, the little lenses, that's not going to fly either. So it has to be legible. Like within reason, I mean, you can still print pretty small and still make it readable. But, you know, in my case, I'd have to take it off and read it. But, you know, as long as it's legible, that's fine. Magnifying glass is just pushing. It's just pushing. No. Um, all right. Any other questions? Going once, going twice, two and a half. Absolutely. And that's three. All done.